Blue Pie Tower, this is 03 Baker 626, position 3 miles north of your field. Landing for Nuapai, request permission to join your traffic pattern. Over. 03 Baker 626, this is for Nuapai, position 3 miles north of the field. Clear to enter traffic pattern, runway 31, wind southwest 4 knots. Over. 03 Baker 626, roger, out. Zero three Baker six two six. This is for Pai. One and clear on runway three one. Caution slight crosswind. Over. Zero three Baker six two six. Roger out. end of 1945, and the men and the aircraft they flew were coming home from the Pacific. The war was finished. Oh, well, that's over. Good thing, too. Yeah, I wonder what'll happen to these aircraft now. Oh, scrap them, probably. Huh, maybe that'll happen to us, too. No, we'll be all right. Still, we've certainly done a variety of jobs in these old kites. Remember that supply dropping job we did on Bougainville for the Aussies when they were surrounded by the Japs? Of course, it wasn't so tough for us as it was for the boys down below. All we had to do was to drop the food and ammunition so they could stick it out a while longer. other jobs, like bringing up supplies from NZ for the Army and Air Force and the islands. I wouldn't mind a bob for every pound of stuff we carried. Must have run into a good many tons. Everything from beer to bacon. But there wasn't any other way of getting it all up there. Not quickly enough, anyhow. Ha! <laughs> Won't forget the day the boys turned out to welcome the first woman to arrive on Green Island. A nurse. She wasn't bad, either. And then on VJ Day, up to Singapore. First plane to fly in after the surrender, even before the RAF arrived. Remember all those New Zealand POWs there, and starting that ferry service between Singapore and Auckland till we got all the boys home. It was the last job we did. Not a bad one, either. Well, we've had it anyway, Bert. Let's wander over the mess and see what's in the mailbag. OK. In this well, same year, 1945, the National Airways, Airways Corporation was set up. Its purpose was to coordinate and expand the country's civil airlines. The problem was how to do the job, where to get the extra aircraft and the men to fly them. At the corporation's first board meeting, its chairman, Sir Leonard Isaac, offers a solution to his directors. We can get the men who served with the RNZAF and the transport planes they used. The men can be trained in New Zealand to meet the needs of civil aviation. But the Lodestars and Dakotas we buy from the Air Force must be converted for commercial use. The job of converting all the Dakota aircraft is done in Australia. <laughs> to this huge workshop in Melbourne comes the plane Dakota 03 Baker 626. Her wartime camouflage is stripped off, giving her a glistening silver surface and another 10 miles an hour in speed. Every part of the Dakota is pulled down, the engine and parts of the engine, every nut and bolt. The delicate, finely balanced sections of the instrument panel are dismantled, examined, carefully overhauled and assembled again. In the upholstery department, cushions are sewn together for the passengers' chairs. The aircraft's conversion to civil use has started, and back in New Zealand, the pilots who will fly the planes start on their conversion course. The most highly trained pilots that served in the Air Force. But civil flying standards are different. You will have to learn a great deal in the months that you spend here. 
You will undergo some more flying instruction and as well have to pass some pretty stiff examinations in navigation, engineering and radio. When we fly our aircraft down the beam, we will be receiving both the A's and the N's with equal volume. And these symbols are interlinked to form a steady beam note. In bad weather conditions, the radio range can guide us right into the airfield and down to within 500 feet of the ground. The aircraft's conversion is well on the way. The engines, thoroughly overhauled and tested, come off the assembly line and her wings are fitted on again. Now the pilots are sitting their exams know when you're over the top of the rain station? Well, when we get into the area of silence around here, the beam note stops and the amber light on the instrument panel comes on. Yes, that's right. All right, you've got five minutes to finish off. Time's up. Hand in your charts. The pilot's examinations are over, and now the plane too is almost ready for airline service. The undercarriage is tested, and inside the necessary changes are made. The sides are lined with soundproofing, a small kitchenette for the passengers' meals fitted at the end, and the comfortable chairs are taken in. The last touch, the name of the airliner, Pakara, is painted on the nose and the aircraft is given a final rub down. It's ready to go. Pakara is ready for the air, and so are the men who are going to fly her and other aircraft of the corporation's airlines. Their operations manager reminds them of their future responsibilities as civil pilots. Remember too that each one of you is a member of a team, you and the other aircrew members, the engineers, the pilots and so on, every one of whom has to work together if we're going to achieve the results we wish to secure. Good luck to you all. Briefing for their first flight from Christchurch to Auckland via Padapadam. Will you fly above the cloud? Yes, so we'll get the benefit of the tailwind. In 1939, New Zealand Civil Airlines flew just over a million miles. In 1947, they covered nearly three million miles. In 1939, 32,000 passengers were carried, but in 1947, 136,000 people travelled by air. By the Douglas, will you please board the airliner ZKAOZ, now standing on the centre of the tarmac. Passengers for Auckland, your airliner is ZKAOZ. Will you please go aboard now? The steward is waiting to show you to your seats. Please advise him of your seat number. Passengers from Auckland, Palmerston and Wellington and those joining at Christchurch... Passengers OK? Dunedin, yes, they're set. Chicago, will you please... Uh, Alan Carr, this is Douglas Abel, Abel, Zimba, bound Tampa Ram, uh, taxi clear, Douglas Abel, Abel, Zebra from Howard, you are cleared of taxi, the takeoff vector is zero, five, and the time, one, two, three, zero, over. Douglas Abel, Zebra, Abel, Zebra, Abel, Zebra, farewell wave and the Douglas airliner Picara, once called Dakota 03 Baker 626, is airborne again. Today, every important town and city in the country is linked by air. You can go by air safely, swiftly and comfortably. New Zealand's airlines are publicly owned, owned by the people themselves. They have inherited a tradition of safety from the past. They're in the hands of men who know their jobs thoroughly. For air travel is the travel of today and tomorrow.